What is going on, everyone, and welcome to a special bonus episode here on Anytime with Ken and Alden. It's another edition of Anytime at the Movies, and I am one of your hosts, Alden Diaz, here as always. Joining me again after our Oscars episode is friend of the show, one of my favorite collaborators, Nikki Kumar. Hello, sir. How are you? Hello. I'm doing good. I got a lot of uh, of stuff on the plate. (laughs) but always can make time to uh, talk about the cool things that we talk about. So as always great to be here. Yeah. I think that's like, that's the universal quality of like being a fan of movies and things is that I think maybe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, maybe unlike certain sports things or, or certain other things in life, it's, it never has a season. And so it's like, I can always talk about that Mm -hmm. in the same way. I can always just jump right in. Right. That's how I've always felt about it is like, this is our default state anyway. This is a conversation we'd be having anyway. Mm-hmm. And since uh, to address the lack of Ken, uh, this is Ken's week that he's in Boston doing comedy with Mark Ellis. So we decided to just punt the show, put it on pause for a week. And then uh, we took a break last week. But this week we wanted to put out a couple bonus things, this being the first one. Um, so, yeah, we're going to discuss something that we have both been I think interested in and then when the teaser trailer came out it just got kicked into the stratosphere and we were like oh my god that's a must see and so that first part of our conversation will be about as you saw in the title Alien Romulus directed by Fede Alvarez but then also expanding that out into a conversation on franchise uh, reboots in movies and TV as well Um, Nikki I want to start with your relationship with the Alien movies um we had a podcast project uh well we have a podcast project that's on hold called the one and done film club where we've talked about this before Mm -hmm. and so the starting place of you're a fan we're both fans but maybe less so than some of the other stuff that we are obsessed with. yeah yeah um i think actually the alien episode is our most recently released episode so so there you go it should be high on the uh on the feed um but yeah i think my relationship with aliens started on the great movie ride <laughs> in mgm you're I so think, right i think that's so where right it started that. yeah um <laughs> without knowing what the heck it was i still remember that part of the ride um mm-hmm. and so that's obviously where that is and then i'm trying to think the first time i saw it it probably i think it was pretty late in um in my sort of like movie watching span because mm-hmm. uh you know it, it is obviously pretty intense so it's like you shouldn't probably be watching it <laughs> until a certain age um right. but like yeah i think i think probably like i probably caught bits of sadly like alien resurrection on tv or something mm-hmm. um but i i don't think i like prep properly sat and watched alien the alien series until my friend was like, Hey, this Prometheus movie is coming out. Do you want to go see it? And I was like, yeah, sure. Um, Mm. And sort of like Prometheus allowed me to go in and um, sort of catch alien with a, with a more, you know, like um, mind able to process things and understand what the what the movie's doing and and sort of just like the the miracle of how especially that first one was made mm. and just the, like all those things so it's like yeah it came in pretty late all things considered for me um but it's it's one of those things that is like immediately like gripping like it it, it i can't like help but not just be like kind of in love with alien as a as a series as a sort of concept and and all that so so yeah that's why i think romulus in particular was always exciting because it's like yeah it's just fun to see that stuff again Mm -hmm. um but but yeah obviously the teaser has amped that up to to all new levels yeah i i am with you on a lot of that in terms of how 
there are there are certain things that you grow up and you and you love genre or you love just movie making or behind the scenes or anything and you understand its importance like even if you're not somebody that's an alien fan you get that it shows up on a lot of best sci-fi and best horror and mm -hmm. best classic movie like it just it's up there in the in the canon and so it was always there and like you i couldn't think i really paid attention to it a little bit older maybe like middle school high school and then started to really get like oh i see why it's so fundamental and also why it's different from predator or something like that mm -hmm. um you understand why it's really singular both for sci-fi movies and for horror movies um because we i we grew up in the like the alien versus predator thing where right. we got to see sort of a oh maybe that was that might have been my first maybe thing that, of alien, yeah, yeah maybe i saw that in theaters so okay. that's like oh three i think yeah so yeah, something like maybe that. Yeah. but even and that's and and that's that speaks to what i'm saying that's a very it's the iconography but it's not the tone no um, not at all. It, it's like i don't want to say watered down and reduce what they were trying to do because i don't think they were trying to do suspense horror they were trying to do an explosive goofy ass fight and they succeeded yeah. at that um yeah. but it's like you don't get the uh methodical nature of predator you don't get the suspense shadowy horror of alien you don't get mm -hmm. either of those things mm -hmm. until you go to their films and i think once i did that especially especially liking sigourney weaver yeah. um and she's always been an actress that i've enjoyed and then being like oh bilbo's in this oh this guy like <laughs> you start to, you start to put it all together right. um and understanding who ridley scott is too is the other mm -hmm. thing it's one of the like it has that like oh they had two legendary directors doing the first and second movie and like how weird is that and yeah it doesn't really have it's not like you know we know that spielberg almost did a star wars movie and we know mm -hmm. that george helped do a jurassic park movie and but you know to, to see it start like this is kind of unique um with no with not like decades in between too mm -hmm, yeah and so alien always had like a mystique and so you know to jump into the romulus stuff like you said that that teaser trailer in a way that feels like poignant for right now, especially post prey, which I think is like a reboot that we'll definitely talk about. And is sort of a, a model for a great sci-fi and horror reboot. Yeah. It's like, I, I, I don't want it to come off. Like I'm saying that there's no place for what Prometheus was doing. Um, but I do think that it's like, I like seeing the original flavor reinterpreted now. I don't yeah. need them to just go back and do that. I want different and new. Um, but it's like, oh, okay. In a way that we maybe haven't seen since one. Right, right. This can go to survival, isolation, horror. Because it goes from that straight into action. Then three and four are kind of mishmashes of both. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Prometheus was just like, that's that's Ridley's prequel trilogy where he's like, I'm talking about other stuff now. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, talk definitely. to me about that. I think, um, you know, Prometheus and covenant, I feel like covenant hits the alien beats better, but, mm -hmm. and obviously maybe because there's like xenomorphs and stuff, but like, yeah. um, but I think it nailed, it got the, like that sense of horror better than Prometheus did in terms of like lining it up into the alien universe but you can't also escape that like prometheus and covenant as stories and as what ridley's doing it is i, I don't know like controversial is maybe too strong a word but like it's not universally <laughs> loved like like mm -hmm. i i came out of covenant and i was like eh, i'm not sure i like the revelations of covenant that mm -hmm. um that come out i think so it, it's it reminds me a lot of the conversation of around like midi chlorians being introduced into Star Wars, where people were just like, "Wait, what? Like now that now this is the thing?" Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it's like because um, because Covenant gets into like the origins of the Xenomorphs and stuff, which by by going into that, it's like it really does change how those first ones feel in terms of like, oh, this is like an apex predator that has found these people and not this thing that was kind of like engineered necessarily. That it was always a part of the story of these people, the company, blah, blah, blah. That it was yeah. like 
they made it more it, it's less random in alien yeah i think that's the thing and and so it's like um with that it's like they did go they did kind of depart i think what a lot of the the feelings of alien and aliens um did because because i think yeah three and three and resurrection are kind of out there a bit um yeah anyway so so yeah i think to have this new one come in between alien and aliens i think that's a really cool move um i think it allows for a new story a new um flavor a new uh, you know new ideas in whatever way they've what they've got obviously we don't know mm -hmm. yet but um to allow that feeling of alien i think like it allows it to be closer um, yeah making so, this thing larger than life again making it yeah something that we don't understand again and making it something that maybe we lose as we transition into action which is not a knock on aliens aliens yeah rules um it's just like the second we're shooting back which it looks like she will at the end mm -hmm. of the trailer she looks just packing some heat there um it, it, it's like the but once we gave ourselves that fighting chance um yeah. then the aliens lose a little something and then you start to explain them and they lose a little something else and then but this one's like i mean face hugger down the throat leaping across the hallway exploding yeah. blood this that the other thing like up in the ceilings you know coming down you know these long shots and it looks gorgeous by the way yeah um it really looks gorgeous and well lit and just and and claustrophobic um like yeah alien that's, does that's what i think is like so important um the movies are scariest when the alien is not being shown right like it's it's mm -hmm. always that thing like and i think just those shots of that trailer sort of moving down hallways and stuff mm -hmm. like that like that's scary there's not even alien there and it's scary right because it's like yeah. you just know it there's always it's that scary sense. when things aren't working yeah. and lights that should be on or right not. <laughs> and it, it's just that horrible sense of something around the corner mm -hmm. um so yeah like definitely to that point yeah and and in that there's a helplessness that we yeah. have maybe lost with this which i think prey for the predator side of things also brought back Mm -hmm. which was you know we can do a bunch of different things and we can do a super predator thing like they did in the shane black film and yeah have our secret labs where we kind of know and we're trying to counteract like that's all great like I, i'm here for the sci-fi war as well yeah um but the fu the fundamental like intensity is the odds could not be stacked higher right. and that's what it was with ripley in that first one where she escapes through ingenuity not out of beating it like it's mm -hmm. not like a, a true win. She didn't shoot at it or anything in that film. It was the grit of it that that yeah. got her through. Um, and in over in Prey, it it was that. It was ingenuity. It was intelligence. It was grit and and the will, the indomitable human spirit that we've seen <laughs> also in films like yeah. Godzilla minus one. Yeah, uh, that's what get that's what get you two through. And I'm excited for Kaylee Spaney um yeah she's having a moment you and i've talked about her off air like she kind of came out of nowhere and was like yeah i'm here and i'm booked <laughs> like, exactly yeah because there was something something else that like got announced not too long ago right and it was like kaylee mm -hmm. spady's leading it and i'm like well, dang she, she is uh she's busy it also has a uh, david johnson who was in a film i watched recently called rye lane he's great in that Mm -hmm. uh so i yeah i'm excited for this film i think it's gonna be really really cool i love that you uh, you brought up the bridge element i like it when and we're star wars fans so like of course we like it like i guess it's sort of catered to us of the the more entries we add the more sub series and sub trilogies or thematic yeah. things we can find and if if we end up getting to then see alien romulus and aliens as its own trilogy I would be very pleased by that, especially yeah. because her with a big rifle at the end of this one makes it feel almost like a genre bridge. Like, yeah. Will this be the thing that's like, oh, you get to watch this isolation horror turn into a shootout over yeah. the course of these three like movies? A, like a three movie arc, also like finding your footing against evil, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, be, yeah, the, the story of fighting back and, and yeah, just the idea of like, Cause it is funny like when you watch alien and aliens where like it's one alien in the first one and it's terrifying yeah. and we got nothing 
Yeah. And then in and then in Aliens, <laughs> Ripley's like bam bam bam, bam, bam. <laughs> just like <laughs> just like blown. Up. They're just getting blown away. Like yeah, uh, like especially at the end when she's like solo missions the the queen slayer and stuff. Amazing. So it's like it's like uh, it is funny. So it would be really cool, like you said, to find that middle ground where it's like they're not um they're not like powerful this crew, but they're not quite defenseless here like we can we can fight these mm -hmm. things a little bit so that, and maybe yeah, that's, that's the key maybe these aren't truckers maybe these are soldiers, yeah, yeah. You know, or, or cadets or that's something. what's fun like we know yeah. next to nothing about mm -hmm. this film mm -hmm. like we don't know yeah. who daily spain is playing like it, it's nope. very i think alien isolation the video game made it ripley's daughter is the character in okay um, i, I think that. that's who you play yeah. as so um like i don't know if that's you know, I'm not well versed in how strict sure. alien canon is, but like technically alien story group. Yeah. Technically, she could be Ripley's daughter. Technically. Yeah. Um, totally but yeah, I think it's cool to not know. And maybe like, yeah, maybe just go into this as blind as possible. I think that might be kind of cool. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited. We're both really, really excited. Uh Nikki and I are excited to see this franchise soar because we have a pitch. Uh, for Alien, which we're Rise not going to discuss here for legal reasons, but yeah. oh man, just just one crack. That's another thing. Um, watching this movie just for us now, <laughs> it's like to yeah. watch that movie and see how that might change our idea for that story. Oh, absolutely. So it's yeah. like, and, we're, and we're and we're being dead serious, by the way. Like, yeah, dead, dead serious. If this ends up on the desk of anybody that can employ people, we're right here. Yeah. Um, who, who produces these movies? <laughs> honestly, honestly, I and I, I, I'm also just excited for Fede Alvarez, who mm -hmm. uh, did the Evil Dead reboot, which is also just in the world. It's not like a, it's not out of continuity, which we'll talk about continuity in a second when we talk about these reboots. But yeah, um, great film, really, really cool. And he um, he said that Ridley Scott and James Cameron have seen it, and they both yes. got it rocked. So and they and he said and they and they had completely different notes. Yeah, which yeah. I love. <laughs> Completely different <sighs> lenses on this. Man, <laughs> we're gonna have uh, such a fun. I forget when it's coming out, but we're gonna have such a fun time. Yeah, when, when in that theater. Also, um, like just on that note, and a lot this comes up a lot in the reboot conversation too, so it's relevant. But like for these filmmakers to put one out is already terrifying a lot, but then like to show people that did the originals has has mm -hmm. to be just like mortifying. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, James Mangold talking about watching Dial of Destiny with Spielberg. Right. And then Spielberg turned around and said, I thought I was the only one that knew how to make one of these. Yeah. <laughs> That's got to be the coolest feeling in the it world. It must feel un unbelievable, like just surreal, like out of body, like what is going on? Because, yeah. yeah, it's like it's not even just I mean, I don't know. I don't. It's it's easy to assume. I don't know Fede's uh, life exactly. But, you know, you can assume Ridley Scott and James Cameron are people he's looked up to. Mm -hmm. in this in this whole sort of like career and so yeah to just even even be showing them anything that you do must be insane yeah absolutely so overall i mean alien romulus yay very excited um mm -hmm. we wanted to also discuss just in general as a free-flowing conversation movie reboots yeah um there's always that gray area is it a reboot is it a remake is it a reboot cool where it kind of <laughs> comes out and reboots the franchise but not necessarily the story that could yeah. be like force awakens i guess um yeah uh there's different subcategories across the board but where do you sort of begin your journey with being conscious of the fact that people could do this like because there are those early ones that really like spoke to our generation or didn't like mm -hmm. for didn't didn't necessarily land something like tim burton's planet of the apes where yeah. it's not yeah. just a, a remake of planet of the apes but it's got elements but it's also a reboot right. um batman begins was huge yeah because it was like oh they did four batman movies and now they're doing a fifth one but it's its own thing that was kind of new um, yeah. so how does that start for you I think for me, my attitude to all of them is sort of like, like bring it on. Um, I think I, I think of that because I've benefited from them too often. 
right? Mm-hmm. Like, like JJ Trek got me into Star Trek. Uh, Batman Begins got me into Batman. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there, there's all these various just like um, worlds. I mean, Top Gun Maverick, I didn't see, I like, I knew Top Gun, but I didn't like seen it fully. Mm-hmm. And, but I, when I went and see, saw Maverick, I'm like, this was awesome. So, um, <laughs> so, you know, it's like, I've benefited from these sequels coming out um, and sort of been introduced to things that I hadn't seen before. I mean, I mentioned it at the beginning, Prometheus got me to watch all of Alien. Um, uh, what's the, what's the other one that I was just going to think of? Um, it just uh... came out, I thought. It just uh, came out. I thought so. It, it it like totally lost, totally left my mind. Um, Godzilla. No. Godzilla Kong. No. <laughs> Godzilla Godzilla X Kong. I knew uh, it'll like it'll, it, it'll be like I'll wake up at like one in the morning and remember it. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, just the idea of yeah, like I didn't know these worlds, and because somebody decided. 20 years later or whatever to just like reintroduce it to the world. Mm -hmm. I think like I benefited from it a lot. Um, So, so yeah, I think it's just great to, I think it's always worthwhile. I think people always do like a very reductive, do we need this like type conversation about movies? Right. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that is a point that a movie has to prove. Like it's not just free reign. Right. Like I don't think I don't think I think they do have to like earn their place a bit because it's like you should be reintroducing the concepts, the worlds, but in a way that's now relevant to audiences today Um, Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, relevant to people who haven't been here before, but can now come here relevant to people who were here before and have experienced new things. Right. Like like it's the genius of having um your original trilogy heroes older and having gone through shit because mm-hmm. how many people <laughs> who grew up watching Star Wars are now older and have gone through shit um mm-hmm. like that's that's the genius of of being able to do that so so it's like yeah i think you you like you need to be able to um come back and say so like so like what have we learned right like what are, who are we now and i right. think it's such a good like when you combine that with the the same feeling of adrenaline and excitement and whatever else that came with the original um edition of that story then yeah you're making awesome stuff and i and yeah like people again like me they only benefit and so and and i agree with a lot of that do you do you have a method even though many of them are loose of rebooting that you that speaks to you and i'll list some like like just as examples do you prefer um legacy ties to an earlier story do you like a little bit of meta in there which i think trek 09 kind of is in that yeah. it's it's Tre- star trek 09 um i'll i'll quote a, a youtuber i used to listen to a long time ago named logan um he would say it's not a reboot it's a sequel yeah. that takes place in the past Right. And because yeah. it is it, it is Nimoy Spock's next story. Exactly. Um, yeah. And so it moves forward and also back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so it's yeah. like that that meta level. Or do you like a nice clean break? Do you like, hey, let's let's try this book again, maybe, which is sort of something that like we're like usually that happens with one off novels. And so we could just say there's this great Gatsby adaptation and there's this mm. great Gatsby adaptation. But but now we're getting to the point where Greta Gerwig's working on Narnia. It will be the Narnia franchise reboot, but it won't yeah. be rebooting those movies. It'll be just yeah. the new adaptation of the books that, the but because it's also story. franchise, it blurs those lines. So what speaks to you the most? Because, and then there's also just like remake it, which is yeah. to me, like doesn't really get included in the conversation because a, a remake, a great example. It, the Dark Knight is not a remake of 1989's Batman, even right. though they are both Batman versus the Joker. Right. They both have similar influences, but they are not. A, you you need to be doing the same plot. Yeah. If it is, a, if it's a remake. Okay. So I don't have, I don't like dislike any road. Um, I think whenever done well, it's always good. Um, mm-hmm. 
but I'm trying to think now. Oh, and also I did remember it was 2049 in Blade Runner. Um, oh, hell yeah. The, the one I was coming up with. <laughs> so uh, anyway, um, I think I prefer the legacy sequel the most. Hmm. Um, because again, it's like, just to go to Star Wars again, I think I'm in a very like minority section of fandom that actually prefers when characters cross each other. Like, like to me, that is like my preferred <laughs> Star Wars story um, yeah. because I like seeing characters where, you know, where we, we know in, in our souls, you know, whether it be Leia or Vader, you know, Vader or whatever. Um, I like seeing them interact with people who are new to us and getting the uh, the idea that they have impacted each other in some yeah. way. That like the new person has, I mean, Ezra and Leia, I think is like one of the perfect ones where it's like they, they rub off on each other to the idea where um, like you can tell going forward, they are better with that experience. And then, mm. so when you watch something else, when you watch A New Hope or Empire or Ahsoka, like you know they carry that experience with them and so yeah. i like i like the idea of when when we revisit something it is building off of where we were because and our new characters are what we're maybe quarterly following like mainly in in terms of the the overarching plot like ray or her or uh or uh, god my, my favorite, rooster that was like yeah. it was goose's son like yeah. we've got our, our new in but mm -hmm. like the foundations are some of these people right here. yeah yeah and it's like and you know you have so much history built into it and and it's just exciting and and like you know so much great tension can occur because it's like in a lot of instances you might love both of them but mm -hmm. they butt heads or whatever. Like, you know, Maverick and Rooster don't have a easy relationship to start. Um, yeah. So it's like, I think the avenues that are able to be explored in that method, I think is my favorite. Um, but, and then also there's things where it's like, this doesn't really count in the word, in the sense of like, you know, um, reboots and stuff, but a, uh, a, a very big thing, in my uh, <laughs> fandom life recently has been the Halo Paramount Plus series um, mm. <laughs> where they, they have very much done their own take on, on a Halo world. Mm -hmm. And to the point where I'm like, could we, have, could we have just gotten a little bit of the old one? Like, you know, yeah. uh, cause I remember I, I started, the, the concept of that show being like, yeah, I don't want them to like retell the games to um, maybe we could have just retold the games a little bit. Cause, cause <laughs> yeah. like it, so, so that with that said, I get a little cautious when it's, when it's the kind of reboot that's like, this is a totally independent take of, mm -hmm. of something because it's like, then I don't want to, I don't want to be in that place where it's like, Eesh. But what about this? You know, what about this thing we yeah. could have had? And you whatever. don't want to restrict anyone, but there are like the, I don't know what, what are, like Batman will come up with this a lot because at this point there are, you know, s several eras. Um, yeah. And P Pattinson's getting a sequel and a, and a spinoff TV show. So it's like, that'll be a distinct era now. Mm -hmm. It's not just a one-off. Um, but, you know, whether it's Keaton or, or Keaton slash Kilmer slash Clooney, because those are the same Bruce Wayne. Um, yeah. But whether it's th that Bruce Wayne or Christian Bale or Ben Affleck, or mm -hmm. there is still vastly different as they may be fundamentals yeah. um, that are, we do not change that. He's never not having a cape, you know, just right. things like that. Yeah, um, yeah. And that's a small one. Obviously your issues with Halo are not just, what, <laughs> do they have capes? Do, yeah. do, do they have the right helmets? Right, um, right. But there are things that you keep. I, I love something that's just like radically different. I think that's important. Mm -hmm. um, and we, and you know, in the same way that modern Star Trek allows for things like lower decks and discovery and, you know, like that's important. Yeah. Um, 
but that's more just like tones across one thing. Like they've never rebooted Star Trek. Right. It's just right. so that that's difficult. They like, all fit in. And yeah. Like, and again, to the point where it's like, um, sort of earlier or like why why I like things that continue. It, this idea of intersections happening with with characters like that happens yeah. in modern Trek now. Where all it's the time. Like, yeah. Where it's like uh, you know, um, Michael is you know, the adoptive sibling of Spock, right? like just out of nowhere. And then, yeah. so, and then knowing that and what they go through, when you watch Spock, you know, he's carried all that with him. And it's like, you know, so it's, it's still very lends itself to that very well, mm -hmm. but still each of those things and, and into the reboots of it all, mm -hmm. what they balance so well there is that every, each of these things, whether it's, Spock in Discovery or Spock in Strange New Worlds, those are both perfect jumping on points. Not mm -hmm. that Strange New Worlds is a reboot of Discovery. It's not. It's a sequel. Right. Right. Spinoff. Um, mm -hmm. Again, gray area. But it it's still as a in terms of a reboot, like you, you there are these ones that layer things that either the legacy sequel or the let's tell a story in that world, but it's not in that order. Yeah. Um, those things layer but they can't it can't just be about that because then then i'm gonna ask it, why isn't this just a straight up sequel if it's right. going to be so concerned with these things and so there needs to be enough distance um which is why you know force awakens is interesting and the sequel trilogy in general is because some people call force awakens a reboot of star wars and i'm like first of all 10 years isn't that long it's not like yeah. maverick or blade runner right you know that so it's, it, it really is just a, a, a seventh film it was only in the sense of like it it was never We're making movies again. Oh yeah, like and like it didn't exist. Like the concept yeah. of it, maybe in some people's heads, you know, like mm -hmm. a, an inkling in George's mind. But it's like yeah. so many times. I mean, we all have the box set, the complete saga, one through six. Like, Hell yeah. you know, <laughs> it, like it, it's only because it was over, right? Yeah, um, that yeah, that's what makes that one. Yeah. It's it's more of a literal like. It is no longer over, not just in a yeah. business sense, but like in right. a story sense too. <laughs> um, we're so back. <laughs> we're so, we're so <laughs> back. Release that same box set, but it's we're so back. Yeah, with Ray too. Um, because you know she lived on Tatooine after. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm curious. Uh, just you know, we're kicking around sort of the concepts of it and everything, and I agree with you. Any of these can work. I think I also like the let's do something in the world. Mm -hmm. um, or let's do something with the world, even if the material is um, different in any way. Sort of like what, what Rings of Power is allowed to do yeah. is not is not legally Peter Jackson's world. So they are they they've rebooted the franchise now on television after it was gone for well, like ten years. When was Five Armies? Fourteen, maybe. 20... Yeah, end of fourteen. So going end of fourteen. Yeah. Okay, so it wasn't that long. It wasn't a decade, no. but a long time. Um, and they, you know, we're doing our take over here. Um, so I, I, I can work with any of these. I, yeah. I think legacy, legacy sequels, whether or not they are reboots, is difficult. Like I do think twenty forty nine, it is a legacy sequel. It, I never think about it as the Blade Runner reboot in my mind. But if another yeah. Blade Runner comes out soon, maybe I will, because mm -hmm. then it'll be like, oh yeah, they did reboot yeah and 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 such and so on um what are some of your favorites that are just sort of like the man that's that's how it's done for you personally and then we could discuss a little bit of like what makes them work which i i think i think which will be largely a jj abrams conversation yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> um gosh the best one that's a good question. Obviously, there's so many that we can just sit here and gush about. But it, I think the one I, I just am immediately going to is one you've mentioned before. Um, and I think this movie was such a slam dunk, like a Michael Jordan tongue out slam dunk. And it, it's Matt Reeves, the Batman. Like, that was just a perfect restart mm -hmm. kind of movie. Um, where yeah, it's like it, it created its own world, but it didn't feel 
like it was shooting off into something uncomfortable like you know like mm -hmm. in a something that makes you feel like eh. like it wasn't that yeah. at all um but it was totally different to what we had been getting um mm -hmm. so so yeah it's like to the degree where it's like what is a reboot <laughs> what is you know what is a uh, whatever um i think that one certainly in modern times is just like it's such an excellently crafted performed written directed shot <laughs> you know standalone mm -hmm. thing um that created its own world for batman so yeah. so that one i think is is standing out to me and how well. funny that batman has two of them yeah like and bond bond has i don't i don't know about the gaps of the classic era if any of them are long enough uh -huh. maybe maybe the gap into pierce because Goldeneye was considered to be a revitalization. Yeah, because it would have been probably like Dalton would have been like early nineties, maybe. Yeah. And then his last one might have been, yeah, like ninety one or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, Brazen would be Batman and Bond for sure. Later. Like these ones that's like we've been been around and now finally Superman will enter that category. Yeah. Of like we're starting to reinterpret them multiple times and both of the batman ones i mean really all three if you count affleck as being a reboot within but it wasn't mm -hmm. that many years it was just four years which is crazy yeah um, but the the nolan and reeves now eras feel like two distinct things when again it's a concept that just by shifting the lens a little bit like what is the director concerned with like they mm -hmm. both are theatrical and they both have grit and they both have these operatic scores and these these you know larger than life villains and there's a lot that they share but nolan's interpretation is concerned with very different things yeah and the Re so is the reeves one the reeves one is way more about the man and nolan's is way more about the myth and yeah and nolan's is talking about nolan's is very like post 9 11 as well like it's got yeah. surveillance state stuff in it and 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 the cops and reform it's like a, a societal aspiration to it right? yeah like, like we can all be better <laughs> kind of whereas thing. like the reeves one yeah. is just like now nah, this place is awful and he's the good thing about it i have like, to fix it yeah yeah like that yeah, yeah it's it's like that. It's, it's we're not gonna cure the city with batman the city is hell <laughs> yeah and batman is you know a champion of light yeah and i like uh, that that idea for reboots is just like this thing is the same thing what are you bringing to it yeah which i think is maybe harder um but it becomes increasingly necessary because then because i i think that's also the more interesting thing because i think for a filmmaker to come in and be like i'm changing everything about this and i'm doing it this way it's like okay well then you start to, i start to wonder why you're not just doing your original piece yeah um yeah. i'm more interested in like you know i i want to see four batmans all running simultaneously i that's that's what i want for bond not being a super big bond guy I'm I would love it if someone was like, this is a 60s piece, and then mm -hmm. this is a 2024 piece. Yeah. And we made them both. We're not doing yeah. eras anymore. It's such a weird. I mean, Bond is always it's so like just so much it's its own thing. Like it's hard to even put it in a box like with mm -hmm. other things, right? Because it's like it's a continuation, but it's also like doesn't feel like it, but it, it is. It's the same guy. <laughs> like, you know, and then like, every this, time that yeah. they've had the out that people seem to want them to take. I, I, yeah. don't, I don't, I don't like the, it's a code name stuff. Um, yeah. But whenever they could maybe take it out or even just be like, eh, it's out of continuity. Mm -hmm. They double down that it's the same guy. Yeah. They double down like four times in Skyfall. Right. Like this is where he grew up. This is the car. This is the place. This is one life. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think just, yeah. Casino Royale, I think is a good movie to sort of put into it like the conversation mm. because i think that feels most like a reboot because of how tonally different it was it and was very gets they do the protagonist acquires the things you know yeah yeah it was like it was like yeah kill and the all that like it was story one like mm -hmm. as it is in the novels but like 
it wasn't it wasn't just this thing and then you know the subsequent movies were not just mission of the day or mission of the week or whatever it was mm -hmm. you know they sort of build off each other um and yeah i think just to have like enter a new bond era with a new actor i think we i think influenced a bit by the success of of the born movies um let you know let's make it a little grittier the fighting the hand to hands a lot more like intense mm -hmm. um i think you know they they sort of were jumping into that a little more um then leaving a a gap for the silly the silly spy stuff to sort of get in there uh i always think of kingsman as like perfectly filling the gap that james bond left when yeah. um, when they moved into that more sort of like tonally uh gritty version um, you know and that's a that's a question not to interrupt you but like do, are you yeah. concerned with that like not in terms of bond but like overall like are you concerned with um you know like if tomorrow they were like we're doing a new a new i don't know john wick thing you know whatever yeah. or or if they're like this planet of the apes is the last one this fourth one and and after we're rebooting are you concerned with like well the tone has to be different we need to really separate ourselves from or does it not matter to you but it's just about the story because I, I know that's a big thing with bond right now that's a huge yeah. conversation is like we just spent the the, the bond of three different decades yeah um is <laughs> uh, uh stories in three different decades even if it's not total time uh was the gritty christina royale version yeah um and it never lightened up even when right. it got maybe a little more super sciency it never lightened up so are you like oh, it's time <sighs> just using bond as an example yeah i think i think right now i think this does feel like I, like yeah, so I always think of Bond as like being this, albeit squiggly, a connected through line, mm -hmm. tonally. Like the Pierce ones are, Pierce ones are wild. Yeah. Um, so like, <laughs> so then it's like uh, the Craig ones go to the side and create their like own branch. Yeah, and I think because of the what they did with No Time to Die, they they close that off as you know definitively as you can, I guess. Mm -hmm. It does kind of feel like this is the right time to go back to the main branch. Like it's like you've 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 given yourself the blank slate. So it's mm -hmm. like maybe just go back to it. I don't think we're in that same place um that we were in the sort of mid 2000s where it's like yeah, things did need to be sequelized a bit. Like yeah. that was the flavor. It, and it, also it was grim gritty. and gritty was the thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 100%. so it's like the idea that they wanted to make a series that feels like one, two, three, four, five kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think, yeah, I think it is a it, Bond specifically, it's a good time to get back, and then in generally, I think, yeah, the story is obviously paramount, but I think what I think what bugs me the most is when Hollywood reveals how reactionary it is. Mm -hmm. right like so when it when it's something like it feels like they're only doing it because something else did it and that felt really cool and now they just want a piece of that yeah then i'm like you know yeah. whatever but when if when it's like when it feels like they found something and it's like okay this feels like a good thing let's follow this um when it feels more authentically generated than just like mm -hmm. than just the industry being the industry which but what is... tone what tone they're they go to doesn't really matter to you like no you're not like i hope it's different than this no i don't generally i don't think i generally sort of attach that to things um yeah. it, it is in the end like when i watched it does it end and i feel like like I liked it. <laughs> they yeah. like, that's that simple, right? It's just. Like, I agree, and I. I remember Casino Royale ending. I yeah. mean, it ends on a it ends on a banger, anyway. Yeah. But like, I remember it ending and being like, "This is the truth right here." Yeah. So even if it was like a kind of guess, like reactionary to born, I still didn't care in the end because it was. But like, if the next Bond is doesn't really tonally change from the Craig's, the Craig era. Yeah. 
are do you think you'll fuck because i sometimes and i empathize with the point of view of like wh- like when when matt reeves made the batman mm-hmm. i don't agree with this but i i understood when people were like oh that means that the last three interpretations have been utterly dark um i think that's the point of the batman that's a separate yeah. conversation but um I, I get it. I get when people are like, I love this thing and there's so much more to it. And, and here we are. And it's like, people just want to brood. And I, I get you, that. Oh, okay. about it. Are you, are, is this like the, I want bioluminescent Gotham back <laughs> kind of thing? Yeah. Like, or like that kind of people where it's like, yeah. Or like, I, I, neon use, green. yeah, the tone is like, we've been married to one tone and like, cause if the next bond is like another grim gritty interpretation, then I, I get the impulse. And again, just using Bond as an example, this is any mm-hmm. franchise that is a reboot's coming. Um, yeah. But I get the impulse of like, ooh, I would love to see them do do something over here. Like, I would love it if they were like, and by the way, after the Batman 2, we're going to do a different take and, and he's going to punch people and it's going to go bam. Yeah. Pow. I think I think it's a good point with Bond because the the Craig era was so long. Mm-hmm. And it's it, it doesn't feel like um it doesn't feel like we need to stay in it right like if it was if it was two movies and then you know they're like okay we still want to be dark so next guy next guy be dark but it's like how many people have only experienced daniel craig bond right like again the, the the concept of of a reboot at the beginning of like how do we make this relevant to now how do we change it up how do we bring people in who weren't here before um, how do we reintroduce something new or something old new, right? Like um, something that, you know, to modernize a Roger Moore style Bond for yeah. people who have no idea that Bond can be that, has been that, is that, right? Exactly. Like, yeah. so I think, I think, yeah, because that Craig era was so long already, it just feels like a really good time to give it something else um Mm -hmm. give even if that's going back like it is it is just a good time it's again because they 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 killed him so it's like and 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 his version's dead yeah yeah, which is it is it is that it is fine necessity whatever comes up next is gonna have to either revert to the other the other timeline and as loose as it is or be the third thing yeah like it is whatever it is so standalone it is as standalone Mm -hmm. as it can be um, it's so it's funny hard. that the in Skyfall, Sam Mendes is like, no, you see, it's it, it is all one version, and then <laughs> Fuminaga's like, eh, he's dead. Yeah, again, <laughs> I know you yeah, have that's, lots. Of that's a whole, that's a whole other world. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's it. Yeah, Bond is always unique, like a unique case mm-hmm. to talk about. There's so, so much. So you're not culturally like, and whatever, but yeah. So you're not of the mind of like you have want for it. But you do think it can, there can be a time where it's we need to look at it, you know? Like yeah, I yeah. think I'd much rather just like experience what comes out, yeah, as it is, take it for what it is, mm-hmm. and then react from yeah. there. As opposed, because I know to like, like you, you hear it all the time with like, like I, I love the idea of John Hamm as Batman. I've been on that hill for a while, and mm-hmm. people are like, oh, I would love to see him play like a '60s Adam West Batman with like a blue cape and kind of like wink and a nod and everything and it's like i understand that like even if it's not my favorite it's like i do like that we could put something through the paces that way uh uh, uh, james gunn coming out with superman um formerly superman legacy and now just called superman which is interesting um it's like this is an opportunity for because superman returns is just a reboot it that was a reboot cool you know that was one of those weird ones where it was like it was intended to be three it, yeah. it, it was replacing Superman's three and four um, and, and going back and being in the Donner continuity, which, which also just quick side note, I think technically um, Jurassic World was supposed to be two. I remember Trevor talking about really Lost World and three don't come in. Oh, I, I vaguely our calculus that. here. It was before yeah. World came out. So before world came out and he, i think they walked that like, talk back <laughs> probably because or in actions in actions yeah didn't, he didn't contradict himself but you I never think heard about the, that again to the point of like 
you don't need them. <laughs> um, yeah, and, like, and you it, don't. Yeah, so it's like ding, ding. Um, it's not like it's not like Julianne Moore and Vince Vaughn came back, right? Like right. <laughs> it was just they just pulled the, the trio. That would have been interesting though. Yeah. <laughs> Vince Vaughn doesn't even come back in the his own movie. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> He's like when he once he's gone, he's gone. Um, but yeah, going back to what you were saying. Yeah, so it's like it, that that version, and then the Henry Cavill one, which yeah, he never even really got to stretch, which is a whole other mm-hmm. conversation. Mm-hmm. But then this one has the opportunity to be something like really, you know, sci-fi, big, color pop, something, you know, whatever. I mean, James Gunn's already filling this movie with other superheroes, which is very yeah. interesting. So it's like he's he's introducing us to his world as well as uh superman um yeah. so that's 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 another thing too is that in the shared universe world it's like we want to maintain these things like the mcu but i'm sure and kevin fi will never admit it nor should he because nerds are insufferable and they'll tear it apart if he does <laughs> i'm sure there's one that he's like ah, if we could do it now you know i would have taken a crack at it this way hell they they reboot the hulk inside of phase one that's true um so totally that's a, that's an interesting conversation too. He had to there. I have um, I still haven't even seen that Hulk movie, The Incredible Hulk. Yeah, yeah. it like it just doesn't exist to me. Yeah. <laughs> like, and it's only it now that to. they've it's only now that they've started to be like, here's this from that. Yeah, here's this. Um, yeah. But yeah, Ruffalo's Hulk is a reboot of that, and uh, some people refer to Ragnarok as a reboot of Thor, but I don't think that's true. I think it's just yeah. here you go. Here here's yeah. do your thing now. Thor is one where like if we don't get one for a while I would almost want someone to like yeah you're you're Thor 5 but we really just need you to do your own because yeah. we haven't had a consistent one yet and t- only Taika can do his um, it goes it goes to show how much context plays into it right mm-hmm. like it's like you can't just say you know this is better this is superior because it's like like as a strategy because it's just like yeah, I mean, there's so many things at play, like like you're saying with Thor and and James Gunn. It's like that's a whole other factor, right? Like who's who's mm-hmm. making it? And then yeah. it's like, do we? If you get James Gunn, do you not want him to do his own version? <laughs> like that's yeah. why you get him, right? It's yeah. like um, you don't get him to do to plug in necessarily, right? Like, which like, is the hard thing too about worlds like Star Wars or Star Trek or any of these things mm-hmm. is that like. You want the voice, you really do, and comic book worlds allow for this a lot more because comics, yeah. the Marvel universe, cannot even be contained in a map. It's a map no. that needs to be stapled to other people. It's, it's like a big ass, like like, a, like an accordion. Yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah. cosmic Marvel. Sometimes yeah. in the comic books, doesn't even feel they'll have their own universe-ending threats while the Earth heroes are dealing. So you could play a lot more, but yeah, that's why it's hard. That's why I understand where like del toro jabba star wars didn't happen like yeah. i would have i would kill for it to happen but not literally youtube algorithm but like it's like <laughs> i don't i don't begrudge either party for not wanting to bend again um, it's context right uh, like it yeah it's, star wars is its own animal and it um, has a point yeah it, it can have a... subtones like i like that there's Mandalorian and Andor and Ahsoka and Bad Batch. Mm-hmm. I can handle that because I'm an adult. Um, but you know, yeah, they, it's they're like, all Star Wars. It, it Star Wars definitely manifests it in a bigger. It's like a it's like a big swimming pool, and there's just a lot of different outfits, <laughs> like a lot yeah. of different like swimsuits in it, right? But it's mm-hmm. still the pool. Um, yeah. Whereas, like, yeah, like co- comic book movies, it's like comic books feel can feel different based on who is illustrating it right like Mm -hmm. just that alone adds like another version of it almost right yeah yeah that's interesting i i do think it yeah it's hard to consider sometimes the the approaches and like what's a healthy distance what's the healthy amount of time too is another element to all this like yeah uh I mean, we heard it back when Amazing Spider-Man came out, which was five years later. And everyone back mm-hmm. then was like, that's too soon. That's too soon. Now we've done even sooner. <laughs> we mm-hmm. have gone. We have done shit quicker than even that. Um, yeah. And then from 2012 to 2016, we had Tom Holland. It got even shorter. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
that I think Spider-Man, yeah, that's an example too. I have something that I think, even if not all the movies work for me or for you or anyone that was like, okay, well, what's our take on this? All right. Yeah. Well, what, you know, can we make him a little bit more YA with this next take? And then the next one was, all right, it's a bigger world now. Can How do we give him an emotional connection to someone everybody already likes with Tony Stark? Right. And right. so I think that's part of it. Um, JJ Abrams, who would make a good Spider-Man movie, but hasn't, uh, Tried to make, make a comic, though. Right? He did, actually. Yes, yeah. he, he co-wrote that with his son. Um, go. Good memory. And <laughs> he, I think he might have been involved in like an early attempt at a Spider-Man movie. He ha- There is mm. a, a J.J. Superman that didn't happen um, okay, yeah. called Superman Flyby, which got as far as doing comic, uh, costume tests, I'm pretty sure. That feels like such a J.J. name. Superman flyby. Yeah, I don't know why. It just feels <laughs> it just feels JJ. <laughs> Superman flyby. Let me see if there that, were that's a bad robot production if I've ever heard of one. Yeah, there's a costume test with Henry Cavill. Both Brandon Routh and Henry Cavill costume test for this and both played the character later. Oh, so that's not even like let's see if the old guy like no they, no they they had not so i don't i don't know where to place this we're in the time what, it, was two, it was early 2000s and they were this was going to be the new take okay and then they then they got cold feet i guess or never went forward and so they were like oh let's just do christopher reeve kind of with returns yeah i just yeah. sent you the picture uh people listening i'll put in the picture after if i remember um <laughs> But it's, uh, it's exclusive content to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't look at our texts. Um, wow. But yeah, so J.J. Abrams, the Jage, J.J. Baby, he yeah. is an interesting case where he has rebooted Mission Impossible, Star Trek, and in some ways, Star Wars. Mission Impossible is also in that in some ways, but mm. it's like. Mission Impossible 3 is kind of a new start. There's a new status quo. There's a there's one returning character, but like it's a little bit down the road. He he changed the way Ethan operates and his personality is a little bit different from two, mm-hmm. which is already messy from one. Um, so that was like boom. Okay, here's what like three begins the what we'll see kind of for the rest of the franchise, um, with some refinement as well in four, Brad Bird's four, um, Ghost Protocol. Then Star Trek 09, you know, is kind of in some ways one of the gold standards for this yeah. entire thing. Uh, Force Awakens. And then he has been attached to several other ones that either haven't really gone forward or are pending. Um, there is a Superman movie unconnected to the James Gunn world um, that he's producing. And he's been attached to uh, versions of Constantine or Constantine, depending. And, um, like when people say that he doesn't have a style or like whatever, all the normal JJ talk, it's like, sure. Depending on how good the argument is, I can maybe understand. I don't always agree with it, but I, I get it. He is very craftsman, him and Favreau, very, very mm-hmm. modern day Ron Howard's in yeah. that way. Um, but his special skill I've always contended is in that JJ can like step back and look at the painting and tell you why it works like or 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 why we like it like Mm -hmm. he's definitely like one of the ultimate like you would want him in a room people because even you know he was a diehard star wars fan and yeah and was able to do that he was very casual didn't really know much about star trek and was still able to do that mission impossible he gets picked by tom cruise i'm pretty sure um Mm -hmm. and that was his debut he just like fundamentally understands sort of what we talked about with like like you would want him on a halo thing because he would look at this show and be like, but they didn't, they didn't carry this element over. Yeah. And he would be so right. Yeah. I mean, he's just, I mean, a, he's just good. Like he's mm-hmm. just good at what he does. Um, mm-hmm. B, I think it's like JJ. <laughs> it's like, he cares. I don't know. It's like, it's, he he is moved by it and so wants you to be moved by it too i think like that is that to me was super eight right like yes like i never once looked at super eight as a 
too much homage or even a ripoff or whatever of style. Like it was, it's more just like I experienced this thing. It was formative to me. Here's, here's, here it is. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. and not in a way of like, but, and of course, of course he does his own with it. Like, it's not just like I made a Spielberg movie. Um, mm -hmm. But it's like, it's just like the reverence of the emotion more than anything. Mm -hmm. And Can I show you able to... what I felt or what I remember feeling? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I think that more than anything is what he's good at capturing. Even, even if you want to have arguments about what the force awakens is to this or to whatever, mm -hmm. um, to the franchise, it, to a new hope to, but you know. that's what it is. Like, that's what it came down to. JJ was in awe of X-Wings and TIE fighters. So he's, he gave you, x-wings and tie fighters to be awed by right like mm -hmm. whether whether it's um whether it's you know again that's it's up to the viewer to decide what's what is to the detriment what works of the for them yeah. yeah but but essential ideas you know like yeah. he even puts it in those terms which i think is sort of you know as we're winding this conversation down um the something that is like a trend in everything we've said is that like this can all work and it, and we we benefit from it, and so we we like them. Like, reboot things forever. I don't care. Right? You can call me a corporate shill all you want. It's not that. Mm -hmm. It's just like modern myth. You know, yeah. it should be reinterpreted. And and mm -hmm. modern myth in the sense of what you talked about sometimes with like I want people to cross paths because that 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 was that happens in Greek mythology, happens in Arthurian mythology, and so. Yeah. But with that, the the when it works is because that person had not their take in such a literal sense, not like I'm, my, my, my bat suit's going to look this way and, and Gotham's going to be as tropical, like, you know, whatever. Um, but they, they have a, a one sentence or one, th you know, one paragraph like in, and JJ is the king of that in a lot of ways. Of yeah. Force Awakens. He, he spoke about a lot, which was what got me to do it was thinking about, a young girl somewhere not knowing who Luke Skywalker was or, yeah. or wondering if he was real. I can't remember what his exact verbiage was. Um, and it's like that, that's the emotional in that he has. And if he can make us understand that question or kick it around with him a little bit, mm -hmm. um, that's what's actually new um, in Star Trek. It was in a lot of ways, can these two guys sort of work out their parental issues together? Yeah. And it, it, like what, his in is always extremely normal. It's always extremely yeah. human stuff. And then how would this, what would this thing show you to get that across? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's, that's why he's able to, he speaks the, the fundamental story language before he speaks the language. Like people knock on JJ in the star Wars world. Cause they're like, he didn't even know what a Sith holocron was, so he made up <laughs> wayfinders. And it's like, I don't, yeah, I don't think he yeah. would lie and say he does. I, that's not what yeah. he's concerned about. He's concerned about the, uh, he's concerned about what is making these two young people go after this thing. Mm -hmm. A thing of a bob is just a thing of a bob. Yeah, you know, the Enterprise was just a spaceship. It was about those two young guys. Yeah, and I, I think that's and. To go back to your question a lot earlier, something I love about Star Trek is like I do love the meta stuff too, um, and I think that that's what works so well with that Star Trek movie too, where it's like you do create that fundamental baseline. You don't need to know anything else. Question of like, as you say, can these two guys, like, can that friendship be the thing that sort of like heals this background issue, yeah. right? Um, but then the meta side of it, the the legacy side of it is it's like, we know what that friendship has accomplished. So we have so much, yes. like so many yeah. stakes. On we them know being, that if they can yeah. just get it together. Yeah. They'll win. Yeah. Like how, how vital it is that this oh, friendship that's so happens. True. That's right? so true. Because it's like that in Force Awakens as well. We know if these kids can find Luke Skywalker. Wow. Like, mm -hmm. and then, and, and certain emotional beats hit us that way too, which is like, 
when we realized that Han hadn't spoken to him. Yeah. You know, I mean, if the, the, the crawl, for God's sake, you know, yeah. when we realized he vanished, it was <gasps> like yeah. that. That hinges on Surreal. your emotional connection, which some, you know, people use it as a criticism. Every movie should stand on its own. And how dare they play on my playing with nostalgia? It's just cheap nostalgia for them to say Luke Skywalker's vanished. It expects you to know it mm. is it is the seventh installment um yeah so weird that, how that happens <laughs> that that <laughs> you know yeah like i think people be, use that people yeah it's an they out. Use it's that, an out. yeah they use that sort of statement very fluidly to what point they want to get to just say that i don't yeah. i didn't like it right like exactly. it's like it's They're such not a moving target story. yeah and, yeah, and like, you know what maybe they're if they remake batman and they just like never ever 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 say that he lost his parents in any way then maybe that that would be a valid use of that expecting yeah. people to know yeah. i didn't need that shown the batman finally didn't need to show it but it was hanging over the movie yeah um so there are yeah like maybe there are times where expecting the audience to know things isn't great but like i don't think that the force awakens or star trek 09 I mean, especially with that. especially with star wars it's like because it works anyway it's built off of not telling you right yeah. like like mm -hmm. the literal first one is <laughs> here you go you're in the middle of this now and mm -hmm. you know they'll they'll mention an emperor they'll mention a senate uh, that's yeah. now gone and like they'll just and not, and I, yes fire and force awakens, stuff off, right force awakens yeah. use that in the same way there is yeah. going to be someone that watches it that doesn't know the ot at all many of them i'm sure more every day um kids discovering I, it on i Disney specifically Plus. took a friend who had never seen star wars to that movie for that to be their first and i'm sure it worked it of course you don't need to know who luke skywalker is to be like yeah. there's an important wizard out there because like, <laughs> like well like i i told him going in i was like you're gonna be really interesting for this because like you're gonna match the leads in mm -hmm. that you're gonna hear these like words and be like what does that mean <laughs> like, like who is that uh, like what is that about yeah. But it's important. Um, it's like Finn. Yeah, yeah. I'm with I'm with the resistance. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's great, and, and and I think that's what he he understands that. I don't, I think he he understands how it can work on both levels, which mm. is great. Like he he has that scene with uh, Nimoy, Spock, and Kirk when Kirk asks like about his dad in the in the what should be the timeline. Yeah, and he's like, "Yeah, your dad saw you become captain, and he was proud of you, and like all this stuff." And it's like, that works if you love the original series, but it also works on just for the scene because like, you know Chris Pine, uh, like you know that Kirk. And yeah, you because know, this you know what you know this Kirk to, like, is going been through. through. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so it's like the idea, and, of... yeah, and it's like, and if you know about George and everything that happened, and like that, mm. that's great too. Yeah, but you don't but need it, it. But it's like, just a guy yeah. needing to hear that. Fundamentally, it works primarily for Chris Pine Kirk because mm -hmm. it's like, because yeah, it is. It is a young man imagining a life with his dad. Like, how do you not get that? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, how do you not immediately understand the emotion of that? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and and even just like, in in the sense of like what JJ just gets. I want I want to bring up that <laughs> image you sent me because I just I looked at it and I was like. Henry Cavill looks better there in a screen test than he ever did in a movie where he was actually Superman. <laughs> like it he just, breaks my he, heart. <laughs> he looked really good in that shot. Mm -hmm. Um like he like that's when I when I see that, I'm like, oh that's Superman. Yep. Like, you know, it's it's uh it's very cool. Um yeah, no, JJ JJ's just one of those guys, like he he gets why something matters. Um, and not that he's alone in that, obviously, but yeah, he's just, he's, he's such a like upfront version of, of that kind of storyteller. Like you can, I think you could pretty much inject him into any, into any franchise sort of like, as you were saying, and, and I think he'd be able to do a job with it. It's, uh, it's, it's like that alone is fascinating. I don't know if he's like, so like, obviously the daunting, like mammoth of a task that it is to make two star wars movies um and maybe he's like burned out on that work on that kind of filmmaking or something no, it's, but it's the it would be the job. yeah it would be really interesting to see 
if he pops up into another sort of like established um you know franchise world or whatever yeah. uh so yeah no it'll, it, he's he's someone who i think yeah if you're if you're in nerd world i think you owe you owe a lot to jj whether you like it or accept it or not yeah <laughs> you know? yeah totally absolutely so last question and i didn't prep you for this so you know this might be one of those oh i think of it later um yeah. what's what's dying for the reboot and i guess second question of that is like do you do you think uh a change in medium is necessary because sometimes i think a yeah. change in medium is good like you and i've fantasized about a jurassic park book adaptation that is a show so yeah. um okay our alien movie aside yeah um i'm glad i'm glad you asked this because actually i've been thinking of just like how to bring this up in general um mm -hmm. a few years ago i was shocked that we live in a world it made me sad too but i was also shocked that we live in a world where alien predator and terminator are seen as these like floundering properties mm. like they can't they can't get their head above water mm -hmm. and now we've got romulus we just had prey which we could have spent a lot more time talking about prey because it's brilliant mm -hmm. now what's next that's two out of three terminator where are you because we don't live in a just world if we were in a just world Amelia Clark would have led like three great Terminator movies by now. But yeah, we don't and that was there. that was the second of three like attempts at rebooting Yeah, and the TV show. Yeah, you had Sarah Connor Chronicles, Sarah Connor Chronicles. That's hard to say. Uh, you had then Salvation, which is like a prequel reboot. Mm -hmm. Then you have Genesis, which I refuse to say. They're horribly <laughs> misspelled Genesis. And that's, then, her, that's her movie, right? That's her movie. Yeah. And then you have Dark Fate, which is the <sighs> legacy I totally sequel. Forgot, I totally forgot it, about that one. Yeah. Dark Fate yeah. comes out and that brings back Linda Hamilton and, and Arnold. Yeah. And, like, and that was like the long game of two, I guess. And it's yeah. like, all right. But it, it, all that to say, it didn't, it still got its head underwater. Right. Yep. Like, so. Yep. Yeah, I love the idea of in this new era having a a Kaylee Spaney young woman lead alien movie, Amber Mid Thunder young woman lead prey movie. I'm we're just assuming Romulus is excellent, so, so it's yeah. like I am two, assuming, yeah. yeah, two excellent things there. It's like what is the young woman led Terminator movie that needs Ruby to happen? Cruz Terminator. <laughs> There we go. We never we didn't mention Willow as a as a fantastic reboot legacy sequel. Still too soon. Um, Still too soon. I know. I know. But um, but yeah, I think that is gonna. That's just my answer because I feel like that is that is the sci-fi royalty, eighty sci-fi royalty um, trifecta there, and two out of three have gotten somewhere really good. Yeah, and I think Terminator needs to get there with them. I agree with that. And uh, yeah, we'll talk about that another time to avoid another hour on like how we would do it. But <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, I agree. Those those franchises should still be in, in great standing. I think Creed was an excellent reboot oh, yeah, yeah. Um, of the Rocky franchise. Yeah. Um, I In the sports realm, I would love to see, and they, they did a sequel TV series, but it was just like, I want to see The Mighty Ducks. That's a great thing. Like yeah. the Mighty Ducks would be fucking awesome now. That because again, it's a timeless story template, right? Like yes. it just it works no matter what decade you're in. Like mm -hmm. just build a hockey team of misfits. Just build a hockey right? team like, of misfits, <laughs> and, and there's some there's some adversity and like yeah. some personal problems. That, it's a perfect and that could be template. elementary school, high schoolers, college kids, yeah. like whatever. Like yeah. That would be great. Um, it's school of Rock, like it's it's yes, it's all the oh same thing, God. right? Like it's, it's School of Rock Legacy sequel. Yeah, uh, Jack said he'd do it. Um, there we go. Pirates of the Caribbean is 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 in a long gestating reboot process where they don't seem to know what to do. Yeah. There was one that had Margot Robbie attached in some way. There was one that had yeah. Karen Gillan attached in some way. I don't understand why that isn't just the same project. 
Like mm-hmm. that though they should be the two stars. Like, like you know you can go. have a crew, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> and that's, that's an you, interesting thing. You could there's you could do it yeah. you could build it out. Um yeah. so that's I'm curious to see what they do with it. Uh it yeah. is such a great action adventure tone that it's like yeah. to put your spin is gonna be based in character. Absolutely. Um it's a, it's I a also, world that is, yeah, there's so much potential. You can do anything. Yeah, really it in that so world. Much magic yeah. and yeah, absolutely. I think you know other reboots that this one this is controversial because Lucasfilm stance is that they will never do Indiana Jones again because only mm-hmm. Harrison Ford could play. I do not subscribe to that. I'm sorry. No, uh, and there's money on the table. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I on. do not subscribe. Like, and, we and know, let me, let me we know how this goes. <laughs> we are Dial of Destiny fans. Yeah, absolutely. we love that movie. Yeah. And, and and we're Crystal, Crystal Skull Defenders. Yeah. I, I, I'm a big, all five Indiana Jones movies are great um, to varying degrees. I do think, not in the immediate, but like a decade from now when Harrison probably has shaken off this mortal coil since he'll be 92 hey, in a decade. Which, you, you never know. <laughs> you, yeah, you, that's true. <laughs> It'll be 20 years from now. Yeah. Uh, when enough time's gone by, <laughs> he'll be at saying, our like, I'm not... <laughs> You stupid son of a bitch. <laughs> like, I, I'm not uh, saying do more Indiana Jones movies, yeah. but like 30 minute black and white Indiana Jones reels yeah. or an Indiana Jones animated series or yeah, the short that's... round sequel or like, yeah, I'm saying go there, man. If you gave me. $20 million right now. I'm just throwing out a number. I don't know how much it would actually cost. Uh, I'm calling up Bradley Cooper and I'm yeah. like, let's black and white, you know, just you running on top of a train, punching guys, no dialogue, crack the whip. Like, and I just release that. Like, that's something that has, and in the same way Bond and Batman do, maybe not in the same way because he does need to be out of the time. <laughs> uh, you, but in the same way that like that character, sh- that character is universal and like, yeah, it's defined by Harrison, but it's n- it, it, much like Han Solo. I don't think that that's a, that's a shackle like yeah. that, yeah, that. We don't need to do that. So, yeah, that's the oh, one also, that comes out to me. Two movies that didn't come up, but are legacy to some extent, I guess uh, mm-hmm. we didn't bring them up earlier, but they're relevant, I think, to this year or so. Um, Twisters is happening. Yeah, which which looks like a a great sort of like again reintroduction into of that mm-hmm. that because I don't know if people listening have either never seen it or haven't seen it in a long time. Twister rocks, like yeah. oh, that, that movie. Awesome. That movie rocks. Um, yeah. so like go watch it. Um, but yeah, just to be able to do that, um, that sort of like story world again will be really cool. And then and then Heat Two is is supposed to be coming. <sighs> down the pipeline um which i guess is a legacy sequel like again we don't know what the heck it'll be but um i think it's like i think it's a godfather 2 type thing like part going back sort of thing yeah 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 Yeah. so i think that can be those are those are like two i've got on my eye on as well um less less sci-fi but uh yeah exciting hell yeah hell yeah lots to be excited about uh, more and more of these all the time. Some we didn't dive into. We'll revisit this topic, I'm sure. Um, where we'll talk about, I mean, we mentioned it briefly, but we'll talk about how much the Andy Circus apes is a perfect example of this. Yeah. Um, we could talk about any number of horror reboots and franchises outside of Alien, things that have come back, like Exorcist films or Friday the 13th films, Evil Dead. Omen reading. movies coming out. The Omen, yeah, which mm-hmm. has been described by someone that saw it as the Rogue One of Omen. Like wow. actually stitching to the original, um, okay, in, a, in okay. way more of a direct way than because it is thought. called the first one, right? The first it's called the first, yeah. and and it looked you could tell by the trailer that it's some of the origins that you hear about. Um, yeah. but Charles Dance, I, baby, yeah. bring it home. Never misses. Um, so yeah, this has been a really fun conversation. Just fun to kick it around, reflect on yeah. some of this. Uh, now I'm now I want to go watch Star Trek. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's great and, and yeah so there, there's a lot that uh to be excited about and i i think hopefully if anyone's listened to this all the way through you maybe if if you didn't already i'm sure people that are on this channel probably already kind of agree um but 
let's push back a little bit on the oh they're creatively bankrupt or oh they have to rehash because it's like no it's it's work it's high pressure yeah. Yeah. to reinterpret something and to put some, put a spin on something in it and it it's more normal than people realize that's that is the entire bedrock of theater yeah. and that world never wags a finger at it that world which is portrayed as more uppity a lot of the time is like Oh, you're putting on Hamlet for the eight thousandth time. Really excited yeah. for this. <laughs> yeah. like, Can't wait to they, see this interpretation. Yeah. They literally yeah. will swap out one actor and be like, oh, it's new. Like the film they, we love, Tragedy Macbeth. It's like how many yeah how many Macbeth stories have existed? And it's like, and that is singular. That's like fantastic. the third good Macbeth movie, let alone yeah. stage, let alone yeah. appearing in other things. So yeah, it's uh it's it's fun. It's a fun conversation. Well, we are wrapping up now. It's so funny. I went over text. I said this would go like an hour twenty, and that's pretty much exactly what there happened. There we go. Um, watch tell everybody where they can find you. Tell them about Yubnub Club that's happening over on ISP, and yep. then we'll sign off. Yeah. Uh, so you can find me on Twitter at Nequitius N A Q U I C I O U S. I well, I refuse to say X. It is still Twitter. Um, then uh, yeah, you can check out the Imperial Senate podcast at M Senate pod on Twitter. And in within that uh, main show that I do with Charlie and Claire, we, or I have started my own little sort of like pocket show of the Yubnub club, which um, is free reign to do whatever I want. So not necessarily star Wars. If you want star Wars, stick to the main show. Um, if you want uh, not maybe or maybe not star Wars, because <laughs> star Wars is always on the table. Uh, hard to escape it. Um, but if you want to just f- figure out something random, whatever is the topic uh come join us there first episodes out with our good friend reed devaney to talk about video game industry and uh the video game that he was a co-producer of called asuria's embers which is available to play now on steam uh for free. so um so yeah check out the Ebnup club it's a fun place lots coming up this guy's coming up you'll, you'll that's right him. you'll hear him again part two of the of the oscars award season discussion Indeed, indeed, indeed. We will continue to talk movies over there. We'll continue to talk movies here. If you're here on the Anytime channel, thanks so much. Um, like I said up top, main show just took vacation week because um, Ken's on the road doing comedy. Links down below um, for all Ken and Mark Ellis comedy dates. Uh, as always, thanks to him for leaving me the keys <laughs> uh, to just do whatever. Um, but yeah, any anytime with Ken and Alden, the live show is Fridays. 11 Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. That's, you know, life, culture, commentary, politics, all that stuff. Relationships, love, romance, adventure. Um, <laughs> Nikki works with me over on Oxford Radio, frequent collaborator. We do rewatch over there, which we keep saying is going to come back, and it is because you're about to move, and then I feel like that'll be the good time. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Oxford Radio, the main show where I discuss Star Wars, is back. Um, had the three return episodes. I have an episode with Kelly Knox coming up. Uh, I have an episode, uh, uh, fan Q and a coming up as well as some other things. Um, of course, force center and Imperial Senate podcast, Ken's and Nikki's shows as well with yub nub. Go check those out. You can find everything at any time on air or that Alden Diaz. And that's on all the platforms. And again, it is called Twitter. There's also the TikTok and hive and Instagram and Facebook and muckrack and, Snapchat and, and the Hinge. <laughs> There's Hinge as well. Letterboxd. Uh, there we, Letterboxd the best oh, and media. Letterboxd. The best social media. Follow both of us on Letterboxd. Just create um, an anytime account on Letterboxd. Oh, that'd be so funny. Everybody can like, chime in. It would be me watching things and then like a World War II documentary from Ken. That, or, or you. <laughs> that slides in. <laughs> Ken and I watch it together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so funny. All right. Well, we'll catch you next time right here on Anytime. This has been Anytime at the Movies. Go watch 2009 Star Trek.